Good evening, everybody. It's Pastor Rago here with tonight's evening devotion. It is uh, a Thursday evening, and I feel still kind of anxious in the midst of, uh, of this stay-at-home order here in Michigan because uh, I know tomorrow, uh, you know, in the news, they're saying there's uh, more more things coming, like uh, the, the governor has another press conference, and she's said it's likely that this stay-at-home order is going to be extended some more, and, uh, and because of that, then uh, usually, then it, maybe it's just me, but I, am, uh, I, I feel like if I know something's coming, then I read more, and I want to know it now, and I want to get the information right away, and it is uh, maybe unhealthy how much uh, you then read another article and, and try to find out more about what's happening and what's coming next and try to see into the future. That's... Uh, I've talked about that a bit before, and uh, there's good healthy ways to do that and probably some unhealthy habits that some of us have. Pastor Nendorf and I were having a conversation earlier today about how uh, we are in the midst of this pandemic, and you know, both of us feel like we're kind of sick and tired of hearing about this and, and that we wish there was uh, something else we could discuss. But at the same time, it's all we want to talk about because there's still so much that we need to know and need to discuss and make plans for and have contingencies for, etc. And so it is the thing that keeps coming up again and again. And, uh, and when I'm reading God's Word, that's what comes up again and again when I'm reading through it. I think, how does this relate to my life experience right now and how is God shaping me in, uh, in where I am? How is he, uh, he guiding me and preparing me to speak God's word, to speak his word and to, to proclaim it and understand it and, and be a good pastor to people who need um, their pastors to speak to this? But also, how, uh, how is it preparing me now to, uh, to be a faithful witness into the future? And how do others see me as a Christian today and in the future? So these are ways to, to study God's word today, and that's what we're going to do tonight. In, uh, in looking at 1 Peter. So we've been looking at 1 Peter for a while, and uh, we're going to keep continuing on tonight. Uh, a couple nights ago, we saw Peter talking about how Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith, and on him we build, and our faith is uh, founded upon him, and also how he calls us his chosen people. Who does uh, he say we are? We are his, and we're this royal priesthood and a holy nation, people belonging to him. And so then, how does that play out in the way that we uh, interact with one another, interact with the society that we live in? Because we live in a secular world. What does that then do to our reality and understanding? And so he keeps going on, and, uh, and Peter writes about this. He continues his train of thought, and we're going to try to follow him in First uh, Peter chapter 2. And so uh, he says, beloved, so he's talking to these Christians who are uh, in relationship with him, and uh, he sees his brothers and sisters in Christ. This is verse 11, chapter 2, verse 11. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles, and there comes up that exile idea again, how we're um, not quite where God needs us to be in his kingdom eternally, uh, where he desires us to be. We're waiting for the... Uh, promise of Jesus to return to bring us into his kingdom eternally in fullness and for now we're um, we're sojourners we're people who are transient in a sense to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul and in this idea um, I was uh, reading what another pastor said about this it, uh, it in a sense it helps us to frame our, uh, our reality now in an eternal light. And that's uh, part of what Paul's trying to do is he's writing to these Christians. He's helping them see their current reality in the light of eternity. And so when we think about ourselves as sojourners and exiles, uh, we're going to sing, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, which uses the language of pilgrim. And so we're pilgrims in a foreign land here uh, right now. That uh, that concept is hard for us to fully grasp and, and to say, yeah, I want to live my life that way, like somebody who's not where I'm supposed to be. Um, and, uh, and the analogy has been made that even your homes 
You can think of your homes as uh, belonging to somebody else, that it is a place that you currently reside in, but it's like uh, an inn or a bed and breakfast or an Airbnb. You know, you're, you're renting this space, you're using this space, it's been given to you to, to use, and, uh, and then you have some money to use that you need to get supplies that you need, like food and clothing, and, uh, and you have this shelter around you. But really, those things that you have belong to someone else. They belong to God. And when we frame it that way, even the things that we say, this is mine, or this is my possession, or this is what God has given to me to use in this time, it, uh, it then pay, puts all of the things that we have and that we own in a different light because we say, okay, God has this and he's given it to me to use, but maybe he's going to give it to somebody else. He's going to use me to bless someone else with it. Maybe he's going to take it away from me in a way, because I'm creating an idol out of these things. When we start to think about ourselves as sojourners and uh, pilgrims and exiles in that way, then we start to get to what Peter's talking about here in the way that we understand ourselves now, presently, in an eternal reality. So he's calling us to um, purge away the passions of the flesh, which wage war against us, those things that are uh, earthly, that are transient, that we shouldn't hold on to, keep them in eternal um, understanding. And then he says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. This kind of echoes the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. He says this in uh, Matthew chapter 5, how uh, your light shines so that others see your good deeds and give glory to your Father in heaven. When others say, oh, those Christians, what are they doing now in the midst of this pandemic? Well, they're probably going to say, we have to worship. And so then they're going to get a lot of people sick, right? That's uh, one of the things you see in the news. And, and uh, if one church does it, then that's the church that gets in the news. And it tries to paint this awful you know, picture of Christians everywhere. Also, um, what are we seen doing and how... Do we look toward others and how do we proclaim Christ in the midst of this? And, uh, and so Peter's saying, you know, be blameless. Look uh, clean and pure and actually uh, you're going over and above when you are showing others the love that they need so that they actually don't have anything to uh, point at you. I mean, that's hard because we're sinful, but, um, but what does it look like to uh, show the love of Christ to others? And really from here, then he's talking about how we show that love out in the world around us. And so we're going to keep going for, uh, through verse, verse 17. So starting with verse 13, he says, Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Then live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. I think this one, this passage, is, uh, is one of those things I was talking about at the beginning uh, tonight, in that it makes me think about this in a different way. When I am seeing what the president has to say and encouraging people to do, when I hear what our governor has to say and encouraging people to do, when I look at government agencies and what their uh, encouragement is, when I listen to Michigan Medicine and what their ideas are, all of these kind of get jumbled up and, and you, you read a lot and you listen a lot and you hear a lot and it's almost too much and, uh, and yet you can't get enough. And, uh, and so what do we do with all that information? How do we love? And the best thing that Peter has to say is listen to the authorities when they have something to say that is not going to go against God's will for you, but they're trying to bring about peace and justice in the best way that they can. And that's hard for us because uh, we say, well, we're 
redeemed by Christ, and we have Christian freedom, and we have the gospel, and we, if we live out this life as Christians, we actually wouldn't need government because everybody would be just and holy and righteous. But we're not completely. We wish that we were. And, uh, and we know that the world around us isn't just and holy and righteous. And so then we have this government that's there, placed by God for our good. And so it's not out of like duty and compulsion and feeling commanded. And, you know, you, you feel worse when someone tells you, you have to do this, right? That, uh, that, that kind of grates on us. But when we say, ah, I see you've been sent me, sent to me by God to protect me and care for me and give me wisdom and guidance based on your rule that he's given to you. And out of love for my neighbor, I can do certain things that I know are good for them and for their benefit and blessing. And those are the things that I'm going to do. And I have Christian freedom, but I'm not going to use them to throw them back in your face and say, I don't have to listen to you. I have that Christian freedom to be a servant of Christ and one who follows him and his ultimate guidance and authority. And obviously when the government oversteps and doesn't tells us to do something that Jesus tells us not to do or withhold something that would be um, important to our faith or, uh, or make something illegal that Christ says is, uh, you know, his work in our lives, then we then we have a different situation, different conversation. But right now, we're not there. And so we say, okay, let's obey the authorities as much as we can, knowing that we're not really obeying them, but we're listening to our Heavenly Father and asking Him to guide us through them. And we say, God, lead me through this foreign land on my pilgrimage as a sojourner, as an exile here, uh, understanding that I belong to ultimately your kingdom and you reign supreme and we are your chosen people, your royal priesthood, who are uh, bought and redeemed with the blood of Christ and we are made his children in that way that has eternal implications. We're going to sing hymn number 918 in the Lutheran service book. There's a link to the text up at the top of this video. It's uh, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. And uh, there's three good stanzas here that talk about um, how God leads us in that way. And the second stanza is really great because it talks about how God's ultimate guidance um, is seen in certain ways in Scripture. And, and the Exodus is one of those great ways as he's leading Israel as uh, the one who has a plan for them, has a place for them to go, has his desire to be in their midst in mind. And, uh, and so um, we talk about the, the cloudy pillar uh, giving us journey, um, giving us a journey that's safe, that uh, leads us to where he desires us to be, which is at his side in his kingdom. So let's sing. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fiery, cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fear subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. I will ever give to thee. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we are your chosen people, and you lead and guide us, and you also give us hearts that love, and you give us a will that is obedient to you so that when others see us following you, they give glory to your name. God, help us to be people who are not anxious, but trust in you. We thank you for the rulers that you place above us who we're called to honor and love. And we ask that you would give us patient hearts when we disagree or we don't uh, see the, the end of what, uh, what their plans are for us, especially right now as uh, we have certain mandates and restrictions on our life and we wish we had more freedom. And we know that we are free in Christ and in that freedom, we desire to love you and love our neighbor. That is our one desire. So God, help us to follow the wisdom of our leaders in so much as it is, above all things, showing love to others around us. And so that they also give glory to your name. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus who leads us graciously in loving others. In his name we pray. Amen. God's peace be with you tonight. Amen.